Hello, my name is Russell Stannard and this is teachertrainingvideos.com and this set of training videos is going to show you a tool called Padlet. Padlet is a, what we call an electronic court board. It basically allows you to create a space on the internet where students can come on and add up their comments, add up their videos, add up their links to pictures, add up pictures, etc. Um, really good if you're trying to get collaboration, uh, any sort of sharing activity, brainstorming, particularly if you want your students to work from home or you want them to work in groups or you want them to build a project around a particular theme. I start the set of videos by showing you some interesting examples and what I really focus on a lot in this is to make sure that you as a teacher understand what controls you've got. So if you want to moderate this work your students do, if you want to add password protection so that people can only sign up if they've got the password in. So I'll take you through how to add up content, how to create your own wall, different protection levels that you can create and we'll look at things like backgrounds, moderating email updates, adding up files, adding up links, adding up videos. At the end of this set of training videos you will more or less know everything that is on uh, Padlet and you'll be able to use it with your students and set up group work uh, activities and I think if you watch these videos you'll see it's a really powerful tool very easy to use and most importantly of all it's free so we need to go to padlet.com if you write Padlet into Google uh, it will come up just with one D and I'm just going to click here and the first thing I want to show you is just to give you a few examples of what you can do with Padlet Padlet can be used just for a discussion, Padlet could be used for a group work or a project, some sort of collaborative presentation, Cab collaborate can, um, Padlet can be used for brainstorming an idea because students can access the Padlet and then add their ideas. It could be as simple as just writing up text or as complex as including video, links, pictures, etc. If we click on the gallery we can see a couple of examples. The first one I'll show you for example is just a simple timeline. Uh, the Odyssey timeline and what we've got here is simply that a timeline of um, as we can just sort of move through here different stages of history with pictures and text um, so that's an example and as I said this could be built up uh, by students working remotely they don't have to all be sitting in the same room students can come onto the Padlet they've all got the same login details for that particular wall and they can contribute and add to it. Another example might be say for example this one here on the history of Julius Caesar and again this one uh, what we've got is text in the middle of the screen as you can see it here with a nice image in the background and that could be the work of several students working together to produce that. So that would be another example. This one here which is just a planner is perhaps a, 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 a demonstrates how with these what we call post-its. You could just have a discussion taking place on the screen and you can see here that this student or this person has added up post-its to talk about their plans but it could be a discussion etc etc. So the tool can be used in lots of ways. It's about collaboration, working together, sharing, building up ideas, brainstorming etc. And the nice thing about Wolf Wisher is it's got great security it is very flexible and it's got good distribution because you can share the link or you can embed it. So let's get straight in and as we work through I'll try to show you and think of and discuss as many examples of different ways that we can use Woolwisher and I'll show you some examples from some of my students as well. Padlet is free. Um, my advice to you is definitely to sign up to Padlet because it's free and it once you've got an account then uh, you can simply manage all your walls, etc., uh, delete them, uh, adapt them if you want to. So it's really worth actually just signing up. So I'm going to click on the sign up button here. And when you uh, sign up, you can either sign up using Google, sign up using Facebook, or you just simply add in an email address and a password. Now I'm an old timer on this system, so I'm going to just click on login because I've actually uh, already got an account I'm just going to click on login and come into my account uh, close that window down because I don't need that and hopefully now and it's uh, provided me with um, a button where I can create a new Padlet and um, one of the things that I can do from here is to click on Padlets, my pad, the Padlets that I have worked on or accessed, and you get this 
uh, window here or this page here and you can see I've obviously made loads and loads of padlets in the past. Um, let's just have a quick look at one. Uh, this example was just simply where I asked the students, in fact it was teachers, just to, to talk about why they thought ICT was important and you'll see that people have just come online and added up their post-its so some people then in fact it was me demo demonstrating that you can add pictures and video but you could just use it to get students just to come on and add their discussions you don't necessarily have to be using it only uh, with video and pictures and links as well it could just simply be a very very simple one where you're just discussing a point so you create the uh, the padlet and then you get the students to share it if you want to get back you click on Russell Stannard and I think that will bring you back to your walls or your account so if we click here it will bring me back again to this page where I've got a collection of my walls um, if I want to create a new padlet if I Click, just just click here just so just we get a little bit of understanding of the kind of navigation um, this takes me back to my dashboard so that was the dashboard which is where we came in originally and just and from the dashboard of course we can create a new padlet but we can also create a new padlet by simply clicking here looking at all the padlets that we've produced in the past and to create a new one we simply click here so hopefully I've made the nav navigation clear and in the next video let's start straight away and actually create a padlet so let's create a new Padlet and to do that we just simply click on this button here create a new Padlet now Padlet has got a lot more settings than it used to have and it's going to take a while for me to take you through them all first thing I want to point out to you is that when you actually create a Padlet it's available to use immediately if you was to share this link if you were to share this link with your students they could just simply come on if you gave them that link and they could access uh, the wall and begin to add their ideas and to add your ideas all you do is just double click on the wall and perhaps write a title so this is my title and then start to put your idea in this is my idea okay and then another student who if anyone else who's got this link could come onto the screen and do exactly the same they would put their title this is my title and then put under here this is my idea they don't have to put a title if they want and slowly you would have lots of ideas all building up on the screen but we haven't even put a description a question or anything yet so really isn't the way to work with Padlet my advice to you is to, to go to the settings which are here and I'll work you through the settings and show you some of the different things you can do so I'm going to delete these and is it going to say um, oh, you definitely want to delete them and I'm going to say the same for that one there and the point I want to make is here if we come down to the settings we get this sort of sub menu here background information wallpaper layout etc and we really need to work for all these and the first thing we're going to do is put a title in and I'm going to call this simple title that I'm going to add is going to be ideas for you sorry for using Padlet and this is here are some ways that we can use Padlet put in the description as well and we can add a, a, an image on the side as well I always use this one but you don't have to I don't think if you don't want to use an image and I think if you click on that and I've never done it because this is a new feature as well I think you can actually take uh, an image from your camera um, or in fact add a picture from your computer so if we click on here in fact what it does is it works with the URL or I'm guessing if we click on this one here we can uh, drag a hopefully yes here if we was to click on there then it will add up open our computer and we can access an image or here that was it we can take a photo it will activate our camera I'm guessing if we click on this one here I will need to allow to click on allow and then it will allow me to take a photo from my webcam so I'm not going to allow that I'm just going to jump back to link and um, I'll come back to this later if you copy in the link of an image from the internet then of course that image will appear as well it's not particularly important anyway but um, just f for f um, coming back down again to settings looking at basic info most important thing of course is just to get in a title and to get in a description another nice feature of the Padlet is to come down to this one here which is the wallpaper and you can choose from um, a whole range of different wallpapers I often use this kind of corkboard one here 
um, but the background make sure your background's nice and clear light color and easy to kind of write over so that's a really good uh, button to check and I'm going to click down to this one here which looks at the address and the reason for that is that we are able to kind of create our own address for our Padlet so I'm going to just choose for example ideas I'm just going to write the word ideas and I can actually pick that as my address and that will overwrite the address that's here and therefore make an address that's much easier for me to use and if I click on pick you'll see that now updates onto the screen. It's a really nice feature because now I can share this with students and it's a bit easier for them to access because they're going to write padlet.com slash russellstannard slash ideas and they will get into the Padlet. So it's a really useful way of changing the URL. The feature here below is a little bit more complicated so I won't bother to show you this um, but if I did write my domain in and then click on next you'll see that there's a requirements of things that we need to do um, so I, I, for, for the sake of building the wall we really won't need to bother with that the important one for us sorry just coming down to settings again coming down to address is to use this here where you can overwrite the address and that's really really useful right what else do we need to do right well the next thing that we need to do and one of the interesting ones is called layout because now with Padlet you can set different layouts it can be free form where people can just write everywhere it can be streamed so that one goes on top of the other or it can be a grid now let me show you what happens if I use a grid for example now if I just choose this as an option click onto the screen if I'd now try to add a Padlet it automatically puts it in the in the corner for me and I'm gonna put a title and then just write this is my idea click away from the screen to add that now look what happens if I add another one it immediately moves that first one over and again so when you do grid or streaming it basically organizes your padlets on the screen so that they look a lot in a way look a lot tidier and so you've got three different ways free form streaming which is one after the other or this way here which is like a grid format which will slowly go from here and then down another line and down another line so this is a nice way of actually organizing your content and I'll just put in again title and then this is my idea click away from the screen to add that one and I'll double click again and just look what happens these two will move over and double click and then another one so this way all of your um, or, and that's if of course all of the students that come on it will automatically organize their ideas in a kind of bit more coherent way and that can be a really nice option and again that option didn't uh, exist before and that's called layout and it allows you to change the layout now if I was to click on freeform just to just to show you now suddenly you'll notice that the uh, the padlets now begin to, to appear all over the screen in different places so the layout feature is really nice I just want to show you some of the ways and the types of things that we can add in terms of content so I'm going to click on the screen and I'm going to give this a title I'll call this one video sorry and then ah sorry I'm going to and then come down and this is a presentation okay now I'm going to click on the link button here now I can add in all sorts of links, links to videos, links to websites, let me just show you a video, so I just grab this one here which is me doing a presentation for the British Council and if I come back and just paste that in and click on add then that will then hopefully appear on the screen and there it is so that would be one example, I'm going to click on the screen again somewhere else and uh, open up another one and we'll do link to website so I'm just going to show you again and obviously try to encourage your students to do much longer descriptions of what the video or the picture is but this is a link and I'm going to click on this and again just to make life easy I'm just going to literally copy the address of my website come back to here paste that in and hopefully that will also add onto the screen and it's done that as well and it's grabbed an image from the from the picture actually um, to kind of represent it so again another example now we could even actually have a link to an image so if I went to my website my kind of home website and we just let's see if we can do this from here I'm using Google Chrome it always depends on the um, uh, um, browser that you're using but I'm going to right click here and it says copy image URL 
so we're grabbing this picture come back onto Padlet click onto the screen click on link again but this time we're actually putting in the URL and we add that and it will then put the picture on the screen so you can see there's lots of different ways of adding content up from the links button you can add link to literally anything on the internet any page any image it could be a sound file even etc so you can see that um, you can really make your um, whatever you do you can make it very very rich in terms of the media that you use now if you click on the button again you'll also see that you can upload content as well now you never used to be able to do this in the past but now you can add files from your computer so if we click here and it says upload a file and I think if we click on that it's going to open up the computer and then we can kind of grab files from our computer let's just sort of have a quick uh, test of how that works I'm going to go to some of my documents and I'm just going to scroll up to um, uh, let's have a look here let's just grab an article so I've got this one on blogger that I recently wrote I click on that and up that loads onto the screen and it will take a while and there the the uh, blogger has been added so that would be an example let's just do another one I won't bother to put a title in I'm literally going to click straight on here click on the screen and let's just try something else so we'll go to sort of images so again we can just see um, and I think if I come down I don't want to put anything too large in then come down and grab uh, a small image that I've got for example this one here Possibly. Let's have a look if I've got anything smaller. That one there is quite small. So click on that, open up onto the screen, and that adds an image as well. So you can again play around with this and see what the possibilities are. And you can even click on here and again link to your webcam, take a photo from your webcam. I won't do that. Um, uh, but you can obviously just click there and then link to your webcam and take a picture. So you can see that you can upload files, upload pictures. Um, I've never uploaded video, you could certainly give it a try, I presume it won't work, it probably will become too data heavy. Um, in most cases the way that you're going to want to work with video is to simply share a link from a video from YouTube. And I presume it could be from another website like Vimeo or Video Jug, etc. Again you may want to experiment a little bit with, with that. But there are lots of different ways that we can add content onto the screen. And of course you can have lots of students all working together. One thing I would say about Padlet is that because of the nature of the screen and you'll see that it very quickly gets very full we can kind of move things around and try to organize them that really it's a project it's a tool that works really well with say three or four people working uh, and adding up content onto a wall rather than a big class of people because uh, very quickly you, the wall gets very full and you can also see that the wall gets very untidy and that's the reason why the layout button which is a new feature I really like the idea of this and I'm presuming if I do this it's going to overwrite see and organize my files for me in a much more uh, clear and concise way so it's a really nice feature to have that allows you to stop sort of the, 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 the wall getting really messy so really worth making use of that as well now I want to show you one of the features that I really like about wall wisher and how it's improved sorry Padlet <laughs> um, Padlet uh, click here on modify wall and come up to privacy and I really like this and I'm going to demonstrate this by using another browser so I'm going to log in um, through another browser and show you what would happen if you were a different student so I'm going to click on password protected and I'm going to say one two three four and I'm going to say that this person can actually write on the wall if they've got the password come down to the bottom and I'm going to submit that so I just click on that button there now I'm going to come into now into the Padlet as a different user as I said so if I just click off here and it will close that down now I've already done this so I've, I've gone on to if I just come on to internet and I'll just do this for you again just so you can actually see it I'm going to paste in the address of the Padlet that I want to work on as imagining I'm someone else click on this button here and you see that it says have you got a password so I'm going to click on this and I'm going to put the password in which is one two three four and now submit and now you'll see that it gives me access to the wall and in this particular case I can actually write on that wall 
because I set it that if someone has the password they can write on the wall and add their own contributions. Now I think that is superb because that's a way of protecting anything that you've produced. Now there are lots of other settings that we're going to come back and look at them but password protected is excellent. Now another setting that we can play with is that's really useful is this one here. If we come up to privacy if I set it so that it's public so people can add content to it um, but I also require there to be moderation. Now this is really important because basically it means that nobody will see anyone's, sorry I pressed the wrong button there so I have to come back and do that. I clicked on reset and I actually need to click back to privacy and click on uh, totally public and on moderate a post and submit to add that sorry right okay now what this means is and I've already done an example to show you that I the, the moderator the person who created the wall you can make other people moderators if you want has to approve the entries so for example I'm look at this one here I'm gonna click on approve and that entry is now um, approved so if I go back onto the screen um, where I'm sort of being another person and if I add a new entry in and let me refresh that page you'll find in fact that that entry has now been accepted but if we just click through and click again and add another entry so let's just move down here and say add one more entry new entry and then this is my new entry nobody can see that apart from of course the person that's writing it on the screen no one else can see that until the teacher comes in and again if I now update in fact it's come up straight away I have to approve and then that is then added in that's a really nice feature of wall wisher because it adds an additional level of security so just a few last things we've gone into quite a lot of detail and I've showed you really quite a lot of how uh, the system works if we just click here one thing is you can have notifications that means if people add um, content then you're emailed once a, a day with information about that content if you want to delete a wall you come down to here and you've got this here where you can delete or you can clear the posts okay if you want to do that as well if you went on to empty out a padlet that you can do that so I'm just going to give you an example here so if I was to click on this button here then it would actually delete that particular post uh, if I just quickly show you that actually so what happens is it's deleted and if I now come back to my list of padlets then you'll see that um, that one has now been taken out just to show you that again and just last couple of things again clicking on this one here if I come down to the screen and this one's got nothing on it anyway delete here and then because people always ask me that's why I'm repeating it and did just uh, click on the delete button there to actually delete and it brings you back afterwards to your padlets so that's how to delete and then how to get updates now I want to look at some of the sharing options. I've got a wall here that was created with my students and in this particular wall um, the students are recommending places for me to visit in Azerbaijan. Now you'll notice that in most of the cases it shows me who is writing and the reason for that is because I got all my students to actually log in so when they make a contribution it's clear who's added up their name. Um, who actually made a contribution and that's a good idea generally to make sure that your students are logged in as well now if we come over to here and we click on this button then we've got all sorts of settings some of that I've never actually tried before but one of the most interesting ones is perhaps this one here and I'm just going to click on this one here and copy that um, code now I'm going to come onto blogger now you could do this possibly in something like um, I would imagine in sort of blackboard or on a website or on a wiki but I'm simply going to click and add a new post and I'm just going to paste in by right clicking and pasting in that code and I'm just going to write here a uh, padlet so I can literally take a padlet that I've created publish this post in my blog with the Padlet embedded into it and if I to click on that button here now you'll see that that Padlet has actually been added in with all of its content now because of the size of my um, columns here you can see it's a bit squashed but we can of course move through it like this and look at it so you can actually get the content of a Padlet and embed it into a blog uh, or embed it into a wiki just by simply copying the code now 
obviously sometimes you want to email um, a wall. I think I'm, to do this I'm going to show you another example. So if, remember if I click on this one here, Russell Stannard, it gives me a list of my walls. I'm just going to quickly open up uh, a different wall. Now, this is a discussion that was taking place about different ways that we can use Jing. Uh, again, the students started or the teachers started experimenting by adding up pictures and stuff. So it started as something serious, and then students, teachers started asking me, "Oh, can we do this? Can we do that?" So, that, please ignore all the silly pictures that are going up onto the screen. It was just to the teachers practicing. Um, but imagine that I wanted to make this a little bit um, uh, easier for the students to access. Um, what I can do is remember. I've got a couple of things if I want to, one thing obviously is that I can email it to them. So I can click here and I can simply click on this email button. Now I, I can't make this work because I haven't got Outlook Express on my computer because what it will do is open up an email system that you've got set up on your computer and in my case I haven't got that. So all I would simply do is click on the link, copy the link and then send it in an email to my students that I wanted to send it to. If I've got a group email then of course that would work best. Now just remember that to do that the good idea is to make sure you give that a really clear uh, name. So if I come down again to modify a wall, and I know I've showed you this, but I just want to emphasize this. Come to here. I'm going to click on this here, and I'm just going to call this Jing, since it's a discussion about Jing. And then I'm gonna, it says yes, I can do that. I click on pick. Now see this padlet is called. Well, you can't see that because it's just outside of your range, but you can see it here. It's called uh, padlet.com/russellstandard/jing. Much easier email address or a link to send to students, much easier for them to find it than a load of numbers, which is what you get when you create a new wall. So always remember that. Um, you know, you've got lots of different ways of distributing here. We've looked at email, and of course you can use any of these as well. You can share on Facebook and Twitter and Google, uh, Google Plus, etc. If you click on them, it's going to open up, and you have to agree to access your account, and then it will post it onto um, that particular um, social media. So lots of other ways of distributing uh, your content as well. A lot of teachers get confused about a few of the, the security settings and I'm going to try my best to show you a couple of really important things. You'll notice that these people, most people have written their names at the top and we know who they are who have contributed but of course they can write in anything. Now this person hasn't written anything at the top of their screen. Now I just want to show you something. If I click on Gunai, for example, it will show me that the person was Gunai and, and would show me her contribution. But in fact, because Gunai was not logged in to Padlet, in other words, she didn't have an account, then in fact I don't really know who that person is because or they could have written any name at the top. Now if we look at this person here who seems to be anonymous, which is actually me on another account, if I click on that, here. In fact, I do know who that person is because that person logged into the system. So it's a really good idea to ask your students to log in to get them to create their, uh, their own accounts. All they need is an email address and a password. And as a, pe a piece of advice, I always get my students to create phony email addresses um, that they just use for stuff related to schools um, between our sort of ac um, activities that we're going to do as a class rather than a, um, an email address that they use all the time. For example, the one that I use is BT Internet. So that's why it's really not an, e an email that I actually use for my own personal use. So that's a good idea um, to deal with that. But I just wanted to make that clear. Once a student's logged in, even if they don't write their name on the contribution, you can easily check that that person has made a contribution or not. So that really is a good idea in terms of controlling the access to the site and who's actually made contributions and who hasn't. I've just clicked and created a new wall. Remember to do that. You simply, simply click on this button here and you'll notice that the wall has got lots of kind of numbers. So first thing I'm going to do straight away, as you know, is come down to the um, address and I'm just going to ch change this to test and it will tell me that that's available because I've never used it before so this website now becomes or this wall wisher padlet becomes padlet.com slash russellstandard slash test so that's nice and easy. Now let's just have a little look again a little bit more detail at tracking and working with other people on the site and I'm just going to make this point by copying that and I'm going to go to another um, First of all, I'm going to go to um, uh, this um, person who's actually logged in. So this is me logged in as someone else. And I'm going to click on that. 
and I'm going to add the first thing onto the wall and I'm going to say this is my contribution hello from me so it's totally anonymous not saying who I am and it's onto the screen if I click back as the person that created the wall and I click on that person then you'll see that it's very clear that that's from Russell uh, that person um, is got an account and he's the name that he's used is Russell so very clear now what would happen if someone anonymously comes onto the wall and makes a contribution so let's have a look at that now so here I am on anonymously gonna click on and this is a second contribution I am not logged in this person is not logged in and the contribution has been made because the wall is public if I now come back there will be a second contribution let's look what happens if I click on that one then it tells me no no information about that person that is why it's a good idea to get your students to log on because that way you can control them now let's go back again and have a little look at some of the settings um, let me just have a quick look here um, da, 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 da. okay so yeah if I want to modify the wall yes I'm aware of that so, right, so I just wondered why the notification was up there let's go back to privacy again and let's look at some other possibilities then let's make this wall private except for people that are emailed and that way we would need to email them and offer them a link so what happens in that particular case so let's see now if anyone else can access the wall so I'm making this private and only people who have received the link sorry I've um, made a mistake there so let me just I needed to click on submit sorry um, never mind I'm just going to click on submit sorry let me just make sure I've put on the right one yes so I'm going to click on submit and this is going to allow people private only people so clicking on submit let's come back now to the the anonymous person so I'm going to click on here and I'm going to try to click on the screen now and you'll write something so I am writing oh, sorry on the wall okay let me see what happens when I add that oops something is not right with us please try again it doesn't allow me to write on the wall because I have not been invited now what about the person that's logged in can the person who's logged into the site who's logged into Woolwisher can he or she add and they're going to do a post here again this is the person who is logged in and again I'm going to make a contribution and it's not allowing me to do that because the only way that a person can uh, make a contribution is if they are emailed they are sent a link and with that link they can then make a contribution so let's look at that process now as part of this now what I'm going to do is I'm going to email myself uh, on another account um, and that person will then be able to access the wall so it, in, when you set it that it's only via email it doesn't matter whether the student is logged in or not those who will have permission will be those who receive the email so I'm going to send this email to myself by clicking on this button here and that email will be sent and then we're going to open up the email on another email account and see if then if I click on the link I am able to access the wall and then add uh, information so here I am on another email address I hope I'm not confusing you here too much and I'm going to click on this and the result should be that I can now access this um, in fact and if I click on there I should be able to access this put in my post and that should uh, come up on the screen and now if I was to access this as the person that actually created the um, the um, content in the first place and click on it then it should tell me that's uh, who I am I hope you found those videos useful. Uh, please come to teachertrainingvideos.com and sign up to the newsletter if you'd like to follow the work I do. I send a, an update every three or four weeks with the latest uh, videos that I've added onto the site and also information about online courses that I'm running. 
um, but you don't have to sign up to the newsletter you can just close that window if you want to now to access the videos we'll just simply click on any of these sections here so if you're looking for something about the flip classroom example just click on the flip classroom button and it will take you to a list of videos related to the flip classroom and another way is to simply use the search engine and search for anything that you're looking for and hopefully the videos uh, you'll find the videos that you're looking for when you find a set of videos just click on them just one important thing about when the video player opens up and that is that the videos here that you can go full screen if you click on this button here it will make the videos go full screen and of course you've got below here the uh, menu system to jump to any of the videos so you just click there and it will go full screen click the escape button to move out of uh, the full screen just clicking back to the home button just let you know about a few services all of the videos are free absolutely every single set of videos that's on the website is free and I um, update the videos on a regular basis I do also run online courses the online courses are not free these are live courses with me but they're done online using Adobe Connect so please if you're interested in any of doing any online courses with me click here to see what types of courses I'm running we also provide services and mainly that is presentations and trainings to colleges organizations companies etc and uh, a lot of the time that will require that requires me to go and give a presentation or a talk or a workshop but as I said we can also arrange online training uh, with companies as well um, and finally if you would like to use uh, make videos just like the ones you're seeing now the product I use is TechSmith Camtasia we're a registered reseller of the product and we do actually offer it at a slightly cheaper price than you can get it on the internet and you can do that here if you are interested uh, thank you very much